bear with me while I reenact a scene from what I consider to be the greatest movie of all time. Adrian! <laughs> Hopefully you've all seen the movie Rocky. If not, then I just made a huge fool of myself. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, I'm going to tell you the amazing full story of the movie Rocky in hopes that I will inspire you, or at least just make you feel good. And if you don't feel good at the end of my presentation, well then there's one of two things. Either you just don't have a heartbeat, or I can go back to my CC manual. <laughs> now Rocky is not about boxing. In my opinion, it's a way to get guys to go see the movie. It's just a good theme to have in the movie. Rocky is a story of a man in Philadelphia in the mid 70s who was a semi-pro boxer. And he had a lot of talent, but he was distracted with other things in his life. And he never really got that opportunity to take it to the next level. And of course, as you know, Rocky is played by Sylvester Stallone. And Rocky's character is kind of misrepresented as a, as a street tough, right? Because Rocky, he's got this, this speech thing where he talks out of the side of his mouth. He's got the, this slurred speech. He's got a black leather jacket, and he's kind of got this street swagger, right? So he's kind of, he's kind of misrepresented. But if you watch the movie 100 times like this guy has, you'll get to know him. He's a really nice guy. So Rocky, Rocky gets the opportunity, just like any good underdog story, he gets the opportunity of a lifetime to, to really make something of himself. And this opportunity comes in the form of a chance to fight Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed is the world heavyweight champion at the time. And Rocky, like I said, he's just a small time boxer. So initially he doesn't recognize this opportunity and he, he declines. Uh, I, I can't do it. I'm just gonna get my face kicked in by this guy, right? I can't handle this guy. But through encouragement from some of those around him, like his girlfriend, Adrian, whom I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, <laughs> he decides to take this opportunity and fight him. So he takes it serious and he starts training. He puts himself through this incredible training regimen Right? He's working out really hard, he's super fit, he's strong, he's fast, he's ready to go. But the story takes a different turn. In most of these types of movies, the hero is always victorious, right? We like to see the main character, the good guy, we like to see him win. So there's this great emotional buildup and all this suspense leading to the fight, and Rocky doesn't win. He loses. And this is one of the reasons why this movie almost wasn't made. Because it doesn't make people feel good in that sense, or so they thought. But this is one of the reasons why I think it's the greatest movie ever. Because for one, you don't expect it. Because Rocky's goal was not to win the fight. That's not what he wanted. All Rocky wanted to do was go the distance. And by that, he wanted to go 15 rounds with Creed. Because this guy was amazing. He was a world heavyweight champion. Nobody had ever gone the distance with Creed before. All 15 rounds. He knocked somebody out before that. Nobody had ever done that. So Rocky realizes that he doesn't have a chance of beating this guy. But if he can go the distance, he'll prove to himself that he weren't just another bum from the Philly hood, as it says. So Rocky, Rocky goes to the fight scene. Okay, he's bruised, he's bloody, he's battered, his face is covered in bruises, his eyes are so busted up he can't see out of it, his ribs are broken, he's standing there crippled, barely hobbling around the ring, but he hangs in there. And when that bell rings for the 15th round, Rocky's still standing. He did it. He had proved it to himself that he was standing. Now if you think that's an amazing story, Consider how the movie was made. Sylvester Stallone at the time was a nobody. He was a no-name actor with dreams of making it big in Hollywood. There was just one problem. There weren't a lot of leading roles for short Italian men with slurred speech at the time. <laughs> so Rocky decides, I'm sorry, Stallone decides that he's going to create his own role, the role of a lifetime for himself. And when he wrote the script for Rocky, he was living in an apartment that he jokes was so small he could sit on the bed and close the door and shut the window at the same time. He had no money, right? This guy was kind of down and out. So you can imagine how excited and pleased he was when a studio liked his script and offered him $25,000 for it. There was just one problem. They wanted to cast Burt Reynolds as Rocky. And Stallone had said, no, no, no. He's only going to sell his script on one condition. That's if he plays Rocky. So the script gets around. 
and offers start coming in, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 dollars. And I should mention that at this time, Rocky's wife is pregnant with their first kid and their car had recently blown up. So he could really use that money. But he holds out because he believes in himself. He knows that this script is tailor-made for him. This is his chance of a lifetime. So, finally a, a studio takes a chance on him, they say. Okay, we'll produce your movie and we'll even cast you as Rocky, but here's the catch. You have a shoestring budget and it must be shot in 30 days or less. So immediately people started dropping out of the project because they couldn't work within these parameters. People weren't gonna get paid as much as they wanted to. People were walking off the set, left and right. Amazingly, Stallone, who was involved in all aspects of the production of the movie, he's able to pull it together and the movie gets made. But it's not all sunshine and butterflies yet. <laughs> you see, some of the studio executives still didn't really believe in Stallone and his movie. So they considered having the movie go straight to television. Stallone recalls the time where the movie was being screened for the first time for the director's guild. He's pretty proud of this, so he brings his mom to the event. It's a big deal, right? 900 of the most powerful people in Hollywood are in this theater to see his movie or to critique his movie, essentially. So he's sitting there and he's uncomfortable. He's nervous, he's not feeling real good about it because the audience, he feels, is just not connecting with the movie. The laughs aren't coming when they're supposed to and people are just not emotionally involved. So the movie ends, the lights come on, no applause. Instead, these 900 people just file out of the theater, walk right past Stallone without saying a word to him. He hangs his head down. He's thinking, wow, this is it. I blew it. This was my, this was my chance. He walks out of the movie theater. He's got his head hanging down. He goes out to the bottom of the steps, and he looks around, and there are the 900 people. Crowd erupts in applause. He had made it. The movie goes on to gross $117 million in the US, wins three Academy Awards, including Best Picture in 1976. Launches Stallone's career into stardom. Now, this movie that almost never was goes on to become one of the most successful movie franchises in American movie history. It produces some of the most iconic lines from movies ever. The soundtrack, who doesn't get inspired when they hear the soundtrack? I have a tiger. I still get pumped up and want to go punch a big Russian guy in the face when I hear that song. <laughs> the unforgettable scenes, like the scene in, in the first Rocky where he runs up the steps to the Philadelphia Art Museum and he turns around and he faces the city and he stands there with his arms up, feeling like a champion. Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to go there and see that because it was so inspiring, that movie. So 35 years later, last year, I took my family, it's like a pilgrimage. I mean, we went down to, <laughs> went down to Philadelphia. And we ran up the steps, me and my kids ran up the steps to that art museum and stood there like Rocky did. I got a picture of it, it's great. And would you believe it, 35 years later, there were a dozen other people there doing the same thing. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But that just tells you how the kind of effect that this movie had on people. It was so inspiring. The story of two people, one real and one fictitious, who got a chance in life to achieve their goals, their dreams. And we can all relate to that because we all want that opportunity, that once in a lifetime opportunity to get to that platform from whence we can launch our dream. So when we get that opportunity, we need to be ready to take it, just like Stallone did. Because the once in a lifetime opportunity only comes around. Once in a lifetime. Back to the